rest in peace. Wait for me. You the caretaker? Yes, sir. Will you show me the grave of Sophie Lang, please? Sophie Lang, yes, sir. Right over there where the lady stared in, sir. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome, sir. I beg your pardon. I'm looking at Sophie Lang's grave. Do you know which one it is? Why, well, yes, this one. I was just admiring the flowers. Thank you. Did you know her? <laughs> no, no. Seems peculiar, doesn't it? But you see, this is the end of a sentimental journey. Sophie Lang helped make life exciting for me, even though I never set eyes on her. Amazing woman she must have been. She was. Didn't you know her? By reputation, of course. Who didn't? Yeah, I know. She was a jewel thief. But she was a good one. A good thief? Is that such a thing? She was. She retired the undefeated champion. The undefeated champion? I think she would have liked that. It's too late to find out now. Oh, well, I must be going. I'm sorry if I've disturbed you. Oh, but you haven't. And I've enjoyed hearing about Sophie Lang. Thank you. Goodbye. Okay, Digger. Yes. See that the grave of Sophie Lang is well taken care of, will you? You know, the grass and the flowers. Yes, sir, indeed I will. Thank you very much. The boat sails in an hour. Step on it. Don't you worry, sir. I'll get you there in plenty of time. See that girl there coming up the gangplank with the old lady? She knows she is. Never seen her before, sir. We'll find out. Oi, where's that luggage going? Room 64, A deck. Thanks, Sam. Room 64, A deck. The matter of the deck chair will be taken care of, Mr. Lawson. Well. And do you wish the same arrangements made in the dining saloon, sir? You mean a seat at her table? Exactly. But how is it? Mention the number of the cabin to the person, and he'll give you the young lady's name, sir. Okay, I'll buy that. Never mind your men. Just take those right on to our room. Give him a chilling whistle. I hope you don't think I'm being jittery, but I shan't feel really secure until we've seen the person. Jittery? Don't be absurd. You're just being sensible. No one but a fool takes chances that can be avoided. Yeah, there you are. Thank you. Oh, you're such a comfort, Ethel. So level-headed. I don't know how I ever got along before you came to me. You got along all right, darling. And you always will. <laughs> One doesn't see the likes of this every day, Mrs. Sedley. You must be quite famous. Ever hear of the Kruger diamond? Kruger diamond? Oh, I say. Pretty penny you must have paid for it, Mrs. Sedley. Hmm. Several hundred thousand pretty pennies. <laughs> well, we must take good care of this. Will you steal the envelope, please? Hmm. Peppermint. I use wintergreen on my stationery. This is to be delivered only to you, of course. To me or to Miss Tuff? No, no, not to me. But that's all. Please. To Mrs. Sedley only. All right, if you insist. I do. Very well. Put this in the safe at once, Mrs. Sedley. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you. Visitors at your place. Oh, 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 I beg your pardon. I'm so sorry. Visitors at your place. Mr. Lawson. Are you going to New York, too? Why, oh, yes, I am. I, of course I'm going to New York. I, I mean, uh, see, you don't think I'll be getting off halfway across, do you? Ah, uh, that would be most inconvenient. Especially if you happen to forget your rubbers. 
Well, don't mind me, children. Just go right on with your pretty little game. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. This is James Lawson of the New York Globe. Mr. Lawson, this is Mrs. Aramatha Sedley. How do you do, Mrs. Sedley? Say, hey, how do you happen to know my name? Oh, I read it somewhere. On a flower box, I think. Oh, I see. You seem to be rather good at names. Maybe you could help me out. Help you? How? Well, a few minutes ago, two very attractive ladies got on board. I got the number of their cabins, so I could ask the first to hear who they were. Then I hope to persuade the dining steward to put me at their table. How interesting. And did you find out who they were? All I know so far is the reservation calls for room 64 on Asia. Mm -hmm. Room 60? Why, that's our cabin. It is? Oh, isn't that an amazing coincidence? Young man, are you by any chance trying to make a fool out of me? <laughs> of course not. He's paying us both a very nice compliment. My name is Ethel Thomas, and I'm sure we'll be delighted to share a table with you. Well, I'll go and fix it up right away. See you later. Breezy, isn't it? Huh. Windy, I should say. Perhaps you have some friends on board, Mr. Crane. Oh, splendid. Mrs. Araminda Sedley. Yes, you may put me at her table. I'm afraid that won't be possible, Mr. Crane. No. No, I rather doubt that. I'm very sorry, sir. The party at that table has requested that a steward. You appear to be a man of normal curiosity. Curiosity, sir? Yes. Wouldn't you be curious to know how that banknote would uh, feel in your pocket? Well, sir. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, sir. Yes, I thought so. <laughs> What would you suppose is the greatest danger to transatlantic travel? I first? Not at all. The real danger is what is known as the seagoing bore. Every ship's infested with them. <laughs> that's just what I've been thinking. Uh-oh. That was up wide open for that one, didn't I? But have no fear, Mrs. Sedley. I, I may annoy you, but I won't bore you. I'll teach you here, Mr. Crane. Thank you. Oh, but look here, Stuart, I'm in line with the lost Mr. Patton to listen. Oh, I don't wish to intrude. Stuart, uh, can't you place me somewhere else? Not at all. Do sit down. After all, we don't own the dining room. My name is uh, Crane. The Nigel Crane. How do you do, Mr. Crane? I'm Araminta Sedley. This is Miss Thomas and Mr. Law. My luck is even better than I thought. I hadn't hoped to meet the famous Araminta Sedley. Famous? <laughs> I wasn't aware of it, Mr. Crane. I am told you have the most famous collection of jewels this side of India. Oh, there. An expensive hobby. As well I know. I also am a collector of precious stuff. Oh, in a small way, of course. And you, Miss, uh, Miss Thomas, are you uh, also an authority on jewels? I know very little about them. Don't you believe her? She's an expert. An expert? A diamond expert? Oh, how interesting. You know, I have a strange feeling that we've met somewhere before. It's possible. And you, Mr. Lawson, are you also interested in jewels? Only when they're stolen. Oh? Police or uh, customs? Newspapers. <laughs> oh, yes, quite right. <laughs> Well, how lucky to meet three people with the same hobby. <laughs> uh, shall we dance? Yes, of course. You'll excuse us, won't you? You're certainly a fast worker. Fast worker? <laughs> you should know, young man. Oh, you are Mrs. Sedley's traveling companion, eh? Yes. Oh, Sophie, you're superb. Traveling companion to the woman who has just bought the Kruger diamond. <laughs> Only Sophie Lang could have thought of that. Sophie Lang is there. Yes, I know. I read it in the newspaper. You manage that beautifully, Sophie. Even I believe it. She's dead, I tell you. Poor Sophie. And only the Kruger diamond could bring her back to life, eh? Quite like Just an old American custom, Mr. Crane, called cutting in. Good 
more brandy, Mr. Crane? Uh, Miss Thomas? No, thank you. We're not going to get the Kruger diamond. No? Why not? Because it's in the purse safe and only Mrs. Sedley can get it out. Sophie Lang would have found a way in the old days. Perhaps I can. I'm afraid you have. You've become selfish. For five days you've played for time. For five whole days you've been hoping for this trip to be over. And hoping to eliminate me. I suppose I can't make you understand that I don't want the Kruger diamond. When Sophie Lang and the Kruger diamond travel together, it can only mean one thing. To you, Brian. And to others, perhaps, if they know. To Mrs. Sedley, for example. Are you threatening me? Reminding you. You seem to have forgotten so much of the past. You think perhaps the police might be interested to know that Sophie Lang is still alive. You know, after all, we land tomorrow morning and it'll be very simple oh, to... please! We mustn't let them see us quarreling. There'll be too much to explain. Would you like to take the stroll on the deck, Mr. Thomas? Look, they're going out. Huh? I say they're going out. Well, what are they? Oh, I don't know. Nothing, I guess. Nothing but green-eyed jealousy. To me? <laughs> don't be silly. Why should I be jealous? The usual foolish reason. You don't want anyone to even look at the girl you're in love with. Who's in love? Oh, man. Do you mean to say you don't know what's the matter with you? But I'm not in love. I've never been in love. You interfere too much. Interfere with what? With everything. I've got too much to do. Besides, only suckers fall in love. I've always said that. I'm a smart guy. You may think it's seasickness, but I call it love. You're listening. This is serious. Usually is. I better find out if this is true. Excuse me, please, will you? Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. No, no, I want to talk to you. It's very important. Certainly. Do you mind, Mr. Crane? No, certainly. Thank you. Come on. Why not try the upper deck? I, I recommend the moon. That's a good idea. I'll see you later. Sadly's right. What about what? Do you think I'm in love with you? What? Do you think I'm in love with you? <laughs> I don't know. You never said so. Well, I've got to find out. Don't you know? Nope, but I suspected. You suspected? Is it anything terrible? It's the worst thing that happened to a man. Sorry. Hope it doesn't happen to you. Hey. people. On the top deck. And thoroughly chaperoned, too. 
by several million stars. <laughs> Alone at last, Senor, like that. I'm sure he looks on you as a rival. A rival? Oh, no, no. Well, a few years ago, perhaps, but uh, not now. Modesty, Mr. Crane. Oh, no, 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 not at all. I have arrived at the years of wisdom. Uh, to me, a woman now is, is no more than a, a frame, a, a, a setting for the emerald she wears at her throat. Jewels again. Oh, I worship her. Human beauty fades, but the gleam of a flawless diamond, the cool depth of a star sapphire, ah, they go on for eternity. I feel exactly the same way. Uh, I wonder if you would like to look at some of the jewels I have. Why, I should be delighted. Oh, oh these are really lovely. <laughs> Insignificant compared with your collection in New York. What my collection will be tomorrow. This, I believe, will make it really worthwhile. Oh, but that's beautiful. That is, it is magnificent. My dear Mrs. Sedley, this must be, uh, oh, it, it can't be any other. This must be the Kruger diamond. It is. But I, I didn't know that you were... Be quick, until I arrive at America. I didn't want to take chances. Of course, of course. This stone should be guarded with one's life. Oh, I, 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 I've never seen anything like it. <laughs> uh, may I, uh, may I touch it? Why, of course. Get it out, look at it. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> oh, 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 how careless. <laughs> how careless of me. <laughs> uh, to tell you the truth, the, the, the sight of a diamond like that <laughs> always upsets my nerves. <laughs> uh, well, there it is. Now you better put it away. It's, uh, it's too much of a strain. <laughs> Good night. 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 Oh, oh, I, uh, we were... <laughs> Good night. I could have sworn I heard someone saying good night. Don't mind us, darling. We're in love and it's wonderful. It always is. <laughs> it doesn't seem to matter what you're in love with. <laughs> what do you mean? While you were on the deck with Jimmy, I was talking to another love lawn soul. Who? Mr. Crane. I find him passionately in love with jewels. Oh, yes. He is, isn't he? Why, when he saw the Kruger diamond, I thought he'd faint with ecstasy. The Kruger diamond? How did he see it? Well, I showed it to him. You got it out of the purse of safe? What? Certainly. What's the matter, Ethel? I don't know. But we'd better find out. Come on, darling. But, but find out, father. See if we've made a mistake. Is it all right, Miss Thomas? Quite all right. Well, that's a lot of excitement over nothing. We'll have to steal this again, Mr. Sedley. Mm. Well, I thought I'm afraid this falling in love has done something to your sense of judgment. It has. I should never have let Max out of my sight. Max? Mr. Crane. I could never have given that chance. It was all he needed to get the diamond in his hand. But Ethel, the diamond is still in the safe. That is not the Kruger. It's an imitation of the same size made especially for just this purpose. Are you sure? Positive. Then we must find the captain and have him arrested. And lose the diamond? Get him back. It'll never be found on him. He'll throw it overboard before he's arrested. That's why I didn't tell the person.
Ethel, when I told you that I had shown the diamond to Mr. Crane, you knew instantly that it had been stolen. Yes. He's one of the most notorious diamond thieves in the world. His real name is Max Bernard. Why didn't you warn me? I thought it'd be safe with the person. I thought it would be out of his reach. But how did you happen to know this Bernard or Crane? Mrs. Sedley, I'm sorry you have to hear this. My name isn't Ethel Thomas. It's Sophie Lang. You've heard of her, haven't you? Isn't Sophie Lang dead? Yes. I managed to get that into the papers and I have a headstone to prove it. It's pretty hard to bury your past. Five years ago, I decided there must be better ways of living than mine. I met you and... I should have told you the truth then. When I saw we're not on this boat, I should have told you. But I couldn't. Is that all? That's all. You've lost the Kruger diamond. I've lost you. And then... I don't know about Jimmy, but you haven't lost me. If the Kruger diamond is gone, it's my own fault. I've known you for five years, and that's long enough to form an opinion. Darling, do you mean that? Do you usually mean what I say, Ethel? Ethel, that's it. It's so long stay dead. You're a pretty swell guy. <laughs> and the Kruger isn't gone. We'll get it back. But there's one important thing. Bernard mustn't suspect that we know he's stolen the diamond. <laughs> Yes, sir. Would that be the pilot boat coming alongside? No, sir, that should be you. Reporters, newspaper men. We always pick them up at Quantine. Oh, I think. Interesting. Thanks. How are you, Larry? What's new? Uh, see, the left arm. Have a drink. Have a drink. What aren't you on? Come this way. We have a lot of celebrities on board. Celebrities, huh? Stay with me. They ain't celebrities unless they got good looking legs. Otherwise, no sight. Inspector Parr. Oh, well, it's nice to see you again. Max Bernard, eh? Yeah? What are you doing out in the sunshine? I heard you were doing a stretch in some English pen. All good things must come to an end, Inspector. Yeah. That's one of the defects of our system, letting guys like you loose. I told you I expected my lawyer, Mr. Thomas Chadwick. I sent him a radiogram about this matter. I know, I know, Mrs. Sedley. Mr. Chadwick got in touch with us. We have arranged to have men at the dock. Oh. Meantime, I thought I'd better come down the harbor and have a look at this man Crane myself. Where did you meet him? On board. I think his real name is Max Bernard. If you will excuse me, Mrs. Sedley, we won't waste any more time talking. Was it necessary to send for the police? Police? Oh, don't pretend innocence, please. Inspector Parr of the New York Police is calling about Mrs. Sedley. It may be a social call, but I, I doubt it. You're right. He's here on business as a bodyguard. Just in case you might try to get that diamond after it comes out of the purse's safe. And I see. You can even tell Mrs. Sedley who I am, if you'd like. But you'll never get the Kruger diamond. Oh, Ethel! Look, darling, I haven't much time. I'm leaving right away. Right away? Well, we don't dock for two hours. You won't, but I will. I'm leaving on the news boat. But, Jim... But listen, I've got some very important business that won't wait. So I'll be at the pier when you dock. Uh, landing right away, how do you manage that? Very easy. The simple little card does the whole trick. Oh, may, may I look? Sure, it's a handy thing to have around. Get you through the fire lines, police lines, any way you want to go in the whole city. Well, you newspaper men have great influence. Well, you've got to get something out of the business. <laughs> Look, darling, in case of a slip-up, and I shouldn't be at the pier, I'll wait for you to call me at the Hotel Gordon. All right. 
Well, I'll say goodbye now. Goodbye. Look, uh, why don't you take a walk? Get some exercise on the deck or something. Huh? Oh, no, no. Oh, I enjoy the spectacle of young love. It takes me back to the days of my youth. Mm -hmm. Come on. Goodbye, dear. I won't see you for three hours. I hope it's going to be as tough for you as it is for me. I don't think I'll be able to. Goodbye, honey. So long. Bernard. Oh, Inspector. We meet again. Yes, we do. And if you're smart, you'll hand it over right now. And what else? Okay, Mac. If that's the way you want it. Okay, but I'm warning you, we're going to be pals from now on. We're not going to be separated one little second till we land at that pier. Oh, really, Inspector? I hadn't counted on such pleasant company. I wonder what's happening. Darling, they're searching him. Inspector, you were wasting your time. Baggage okay? Okay. No false compartments in the trunks? Every cubic inch is accounted for. Oh. Looks to me like a phony spear. You, you've hit upon a great truth, Inspector. Say, listen, you. In just about a minute, you're going to be resisting an officer. I was trying to explain... Uh, please. I was trying to explain... That it was a phony spear, as you uh, so charmingly put it. Uh, thank you. Someone pointed me out to protect herself. I suppose Mrs. Sedley stole her own dime. Mrs. Sedley's traveling companion. By the way, her name is uh, Sophie Lang. Does that suggest anything to you? Sophie Lang died in England. That's what you think, and that's what I thought. Well, even if she is, how are you going to prove it? I never even set eyes on Sophie Lang. She was too smart. We got one fingerprint on file from the Creighton job. That's right, we have. And if this dame's finger matches it, we've got something. Well, Inspector, did you find it? No. What? No, not on Bernard. Well... Mrs. Sedley, where can we find your traveling companion? Miss Target? Is that her real name? No. No, I believe it isn't. It wouldn't by any chance be Sophie Lang, would it? Yes. That's the name she told me. Yes, well, where is she? I don't know. Mrs. Gilfillan? Mrs. Gilfillan? You seen Miss Thomas? Why, yes, she went back on the boat. She forgot something. Get her. Okay, come on. Well, goodbye, Mrs. Sedley. You won't forget to look me up, will you? I'm in the book. Good day. In the book. And stay in the book as far as I'm concerned. One of those dreadful shipboard acquaintances, Inspector. One of those transatlantic pests, yes. eh? I know I've heard about them. Where's Ethel? What do you want with her? Who wants to know? Just the police department. Say, what is this? I'm sure I don't know. He has some crazy notion. We have a crazy notion. We'd like to talk to Sophie Lang. Sophie Lang? Yes, Sophie Lang or Ethel Thomas or whatever name she's using. 
Sophie. Inspector, not a trace of her. Well, does that satisfy you? If she wasn't guilty, why is she taking it on the lamb? They said she was here with Mrs. Sedley. Ah, there was nobody here with Mrs. Sedley. Wait a minute. Mrs. Sedley, that woman who said Sophie was on the boat, what's her name again? Um, Mrs. Um, Gilfillan, wasn't it? Mrs. Sedley, would you mind coming with us to headquarters? Not at all. Goodbye, Mr. Lawson. Well, welcome home, Mr. Lawson. Hi, George. Not feeling so well this morning? Terrible, thank you. Any chance to get the same room I used to have? I think we can give it to you. Okay. 706. 7. Good morning. Good morning. Can you let me have a room high up? Uh, top floor, preferably. We have something on the, on the seventh floor. Yeah, that'll be fine. 702. Thank you. Yeah. Get in the New York Globe, will you? Yeah. I feel swell. Just don't like the idea of having to look at that foolish face of yours again. We're all anxious to see you again, but if you feel that way, give us a ring sometime. Sure, I'll give you a ring. I bought one this morning. Graham! Jimmy, this is Crane, Nigel Crane. So what? Well, I want to speak to you. It's important. You're a liar. Nothing's important. Now, this is serious. Uh, open the door, please. Go away. You bore me stiff. How do you like that, Mr. Crane? That's what I do to people who bore me. And this is what I do if they keep on. I had to see you, Jimmy. What for? Tell me what a sap I've been. I know it. Jimmy. Ethel, Sophie. What is your name? Sophie Lang. Yeah, the ghost of Sophie Lang pulls off a half a million dollar job. It's a good story. Do you think I stole that diamond? No, I did. Jimmy, please believe me. I didn't. Then why did you run? I had to. They'd arrest me. Yeah? I wouldn't be surprised. Jimmy, would you please understand? I can't let them do that. I've got to get that diamond back. From where? Who's got it? Max Bernard. Max Bernard? What's he got to do with it? Crane. Nigel Crane. Is he Max Bernard? Yes. Oh, don't you see? It happened last night when you and I were on deck. He got the diamond away from Mrs. Sedley. Oh. Well, can you forgive me? Forgive you? Mm -hmm. Jimmy Lawson, your brain.
Hey, Bernard's right here in this hotel. He is? Why, oh, sure, he's been trying to see me. Wait a minute. What number is Mr. Ben uh, Mr. Crane? Thank you. 702. Come on, we'll have a talk with Mr. Bernard. Did you wish to see me? A little higher, please. My dear children, and such mischievous children, too. Just for that, you'll have to stand with your faces to the wall. Go on, get over there. Go on, get over there. Your face to the wall. Now let me see your shining faces. Mr. Lawson, I think you ought to be rewarded for your cooperation. And you too, Sophie. I'm going to see that you have free room and board for quite a while. Spring 7, 3100. Hello? Who? Put him on. Inspector? Oh, I'm so disappointed, Inspector. I handed Sophie Lang over to you this morning, and you've let her get away. And now I'm going to give you another chance. What would you do without me? All right, all right. What is it? This time you'll find her at the Hotel Gordon, room 706. She's with her very dear friend, Mr. Lawson. You'll find them locked in the clothes closet. Boys, I'm going to let you in on this one. Murph, I want a ring of cops put around the Hotel Gordon. Nobody's to leave or enter the place until I get there. Notify all radio cars to proceed at once to the hotel. Block off traffic if you have to. And get out my car at once. What is it, Inspector? What is it? Sophie Lang. Sophie Lang? Hotel Gordon, eh? Let's go. I'm the guy that brought the diamond ashore for him. I'll get that banana if it's the last thing I do. No. Boy, I feel as if I'm taking out the whole Minnesota secondary defense. Even the reporters are here already. Tim, those guys with the cards in the hat? Have you still got that card? The one you got to show me. Yeah, I've got it. Let me have it. Huh? Hey. Come on. Hey, I'll take the dope off. Just a minute, boys. All I know is what I read in the paper. <laughs> What's going on here? Okay, I'm going to go to 706. Hey, lay off, will you? I'm a reporter. Where's your police card? There it is, right there. Well, wear it in your hat where we can all see it. Now listen, don't talk to anybody. Pull your hat down and keep on going. They won't stop you and see this car. Better on the Sure you can make it? Easy, but not wouldn't it? Good luck. Open up. Open this door. Hey, hey, what is this? What's the idea? Open this door. Take it easy, will you? Wait a minute. Open this door. Okay, okay, I'm coming. Hold your horses, will you? Where's that woman? Woman? What woman? Look in there. What are you doing here? Me? I was just taking a nap. Oh, taking a nap, huh? Uh-huh. Not in there, Inspector. Oh. You, Lawson. Who do these clothes belong to? I don't know. E.T. Ethel Thomas. Where'd she go? I don't know. I was taking a nap. Yeah, I heard about that. What about this window? Don't touch it. There's footprints going that way, and the window in the next room is open. Take a look in there. Keep 
back, boy. Keep back. Come on. Come on. Keep back, you guys. I'm happy. I want to get you. Look here, Lawson. You're in a tough spot. Accessory to a diamond robbery and aiding Sophie Lang to escape. You take my advice, you'll spill everything you know and make it easy for yourself. But you're all wrong, Inspector. Bernard's got that diamond. Dr. North, she came through the window of that room, but she ain't there now. Check everybody that leaves the hotel. Okay. Get some clothes on this guy and bring him to headquarters. All right, come on, boys. Come on. Well, she gave you the slip. Any statement, Inspector? We'll get her. Can we quote you on that? <laughs> find what you wanted, Inspector? We'll find her. Anything that we can do to help you? Okay. I never heard anything like it in my life. Mrs. Bentley, let me get this straight. As I understand it, you deliberately allowed this woman to make her getaway at the pier. Of course I did. Why? Because she didn't steal the diamond. Bernard took it. If Bernard took that diamond, why didn't we find it on him? Because I brought her ashore for him. Oh, now we're getting somewhere. But I didn't know I was bringing it ashore. What's the matter? Were you unconscious? If you'd only listen to a guy instead of shooting Okay, up... okay, go ahead. Well, Bernard slipped the diamond in my pocket. Oh, he did. And just how do you suppose that happened? Well, I was talking to Miss Thomas. I see. And that smart young lady distracted your attention while Bernard planted the diamond on you. Yes, but she didn't mean to. I mean, that's I... what she did, isn't it? Well, yes. But you still don't seem to understand. Oh, I... shut up. Now listen to me. You've got that diamond in your hotel room. Max tries to get in. You won't open the door, so Sophie goes to bat. Sophie's a smart girl. She does get in, and after she gets in, the diamond goes out. So what? So the whole thing is as clear as a plate glass window. Max and Sophie are working together again, and they've got you two chumps working with them. I beg your pardon, Inspector? I'm sorry, Mrs. Bedley. I should have used a more polite word. A more charming word, I suppose. Perhaps something like fathead. I think you'd better go home, Mrs. Bedley, and get some rest. And don't worry. We'll get the diamond back. You can save yourself the trouble. I've got my own plans about that. What do you mean? You'll see. It's good to see you back, Mrs. Sidley. It's nice to be home again, Bigby. How have you been? Uh, excellent. Uh, is Miss Thomas with you? Yes. Oh, no, no. Uh, Ethel's, uh, uh, well, never mind, never mind. Has Dr. Dutton arrived yet? Dr. Dutton's waiting upstairs. Well, well, a minute. What seems to be the trouble? Doctor, it would take a week to tell you my symptoms. <laughs> Max Bernard, Nosey. Open up. Well, if it ain't Maxie the dude. How are you, Maxie? Well, I'm all right, thank you. But I'm also in need of temporary shelter. Shelter? Hideout for you, Nosey. Oh, I guess. You're on the lamb, huh? Oh, meet Button. Buttons, meet Max Bernard. Pleased to meet you. He used to be in the ring. A little flat happy. He's all right. I want to talk to you alone, Nosey. Sure. Go on here. Well, Maxie, what's on your mind? You still in the jewelry business, Nosey? Sure. Why? You got something? Quite something. <whistles> Max, that's a sweetheart. Yeah. What do you think we can get for it? Plenty. Hello, Bridget. I beg your pardon. Not just stand there. Oh, dear. Thomas, what in the world is it? Uh, masquerade, sister. A masquerade. Did anyone call for me? I have it arrived. Yes, sir. Is it a set in the room? Yes, sir. The doctor's with her now. What's the matter with her?
Good night's sleep will fix her up. The poor darling can sleep. She will, with that sedative I gave her. I guarantee she won't wake before noon. May I talk to her for a minute? Well, you better hurry. She won't be awake long. Thank you, Doctor. Good night. Hello, darling. Hello, dear. Oh, thank goodness you've come. What a day, what a day. I know. I'm nothing but a rat. <laughs> oh, that Inspector Parr. I've never seen anything so funny in my life. Way he tried to find out where you'd gone. What about Bernard? Bernard, oh, don't worry about Bernard. I'll get that diamond back. How? An ad in the paper. An ad? What sort of an ad? Oh, lost and found. Reward, no questions asked. I'll buy it back. You can't do that. I won't let you. Darling, what did you say in the end? Darling, what... You're in the clear, Matt. Not a thing in here about you. They give it all to Sophie Lang. I don't think we'll have to cut up that diamond, Mosey. Huh? Why? You got an angle? Take a look at that ad. Hey, there's something here about a trinket. What trinket? This trinket, my lad. To a woman of Mrs. Stedley's wealth, I imagine that that would be worth, uh, oh, $100,000. Say, all in one piece, that rock's worth that much to anybody. Exactly. So we shall return the trinket to Mrs. Sedley and collect the ransom. Ransom? Oh, I get it. Like a snatch, huh? Precisely. We've simply kidnapped a diamond. Say, that's okay. Mrs. Sedley's residence. Mrs. Sedley's retired for the night. Tell the old dame to scram out of that hay. Tell her it's about the air. She'll know what I mean. But my dear sir, this is preposterous. Who is it, Ridley? Will you hang on for a minute, please? It's an extraordinary person on the telephone. Something about an ad. Oh, an ad? I'll talk to him. Hold on, please. Hello, Sedley? This is Mrs. Sedley. You have? Well, why don't you bring it over to my house? Listen, Miss Sedley, you ain't talking with no baboon. You get your diamond back if you play ball with it. Otherwise, you ain't got a chance. Understand? What do you want me to do? Now you're talking. Tomorrow morning at uh, 10 o'clock, there'll be a car waiting outside your house. Oh, but that's so early. Couldn't you make it, well, any time after 12 would be quite satisfactory. You've got to do it our way and not at all, see? All right. But how would I be sure that I'll get the diamond? We'll take you to where the diamond is, okay? Now listen. If that car has fallen, it'll be just too bad. It's like I told you before, you ain't dealing with no baboon. Very well, then. Ten o'clock. Sadly? Yes? Get into the car, Miss Sadly. Here's 
It's a joint, Miss Sedley. Have a seat, Mrs. Sedley. You'll uh, excuse me a minute, Miss Sedley? So now what? Just follow the instructions I gave you. Is that the diamond you lost? That's it. Miss Sedley, it's going to cost you just a hundred thousand bucks to get it back. A hundred thousand? Yes or no? Well. Yes. Yeah. That's the way to talk. So now we lay it on the line for you. You got a lawyer handles your business? Mr. Thomas Chadwick. Have Chadwick, Collins, and Reed. Yeah? What's his number? Medallion, three, three, four hundred. Okay. Good morning, Chadwick, Collins, and Reed. You handle Mrs. Araminda Sedley's business? Yes, sir. Mr. Chadwick does. Okay. Now you're going to do what I tell you. Good morning, Chadwick Collins and Reed. Wrong number. Sorry. Hello? This is Mr. Chadley. Araminta Chadley. Mr. Chadwick, please. Yes, I wish to speak to Mr. Chadwick personally. This is police headquarters, lady. You've got the wrong number. I know. Thank you. And, uh, operator, you will be very careful that I'm not disconnected, won't you? This call is most important. Thank you so much. But, lady... Hello, Mr. Chadwick. This is Araminta Sedley. I'm very well, thank you. Will you write this down, please? I am at 649 West 53rd Street, the basement apartment. Have you got that? Yeah, I got it, lady. But look, I'm trying to tell you there's no Mr. Chadwick here. We've got Murphy's and Callahan's, but no, uh... Yes, yes, I understand that perfectly. But you mustn't ask me any questions. Now, listen carefully. I want you to get $100,000 in five, ten, and twenty dollar bills. Old money. You must bring me that money to this address immediately. Do not contact the police in any way. Just follow my instructions. It's a matter of life and death. Goodbye. Things some people can think up. Look out for that. Wait. What's the matter? April Fool, sucker. The <laughs> one, you mug. Snarf. That's all I can get out of you. And that's all you will get out of me. Nobody but Bernard got that diamond. You can forget all about Sophie Lang. Sophie Lang is dead. I saw her grave with my own eyes. How'd you like to make a bet, smart guy? Such as what? That if we do find Bernard, we'll find Sophie Lang with him. Hey, Chief. Look what I found in the morning paper. Hey, yeah. Uh, sure. And her phone number. So that's the plan she had. Well, the old fool must be in her second childhood. Get me right on her four, nine, nine, six, nine. I want to talk to Mrs. Sedley. That's right, Mrs. Araminda Sedley. Araminta Sedley, can't you understand English? What? She called this morning. Why didn't you let me talk to her? Yeah, but, but I thought it was a gang. She told me to bring $100,000 in small bills and not to tell the police. 
Why didn't you let me talk to her? But, Inspector, she says she wants to speak to a guy named Chadwick. How am I to know? Of course she asked for Chadwick. She was trying to get a message through. Somebody was listening. Can't you remember the address? I wrote it down. Where is it? I saw it in the waste paper there. Is this the basket? Yeah. Oh, where's the paper? I guess maybe the porter must have emptied it. Where'd he take it? Downstairs in the furnace. Come on. Hey, hey you! Pierre, what's the matter? Three hours the guys had to get here. What's the matter with him? You think maybe this same here is maybe crossing us up? You ain't maybe so dumb as you look. I'm gonna find out. Oh, uh, let me call Mr. Chadwick again. No, no. Wait a minute. Hey, 649 West 53rd Street. That's your writing? That's it. That's it. Come on, boys. I really think I should call Mr. Chadwick again. Yeah? We're gonna do that little thing, lady. Only this time, I'm gonna do the talking. Get it? Let me speak to Mr. Chadwick. I'm talking to Mrs. Sedley. Hello, Mr. Chadwick? What's happened to you? Miss Sedley's been waiting here since 11 o'clock this morning for you. Waiting for me? Why, I left Mrs. Sedley only half an hour ago. At her home? What? Well, she isn't feeling very well and is spending a day in bed. Who is this speaking to me? Mrs. Sedley, huh? Watch that game button. Something phony goes on here, Max. A Chadwick guy says Miss Sedley's home. At home? He says the old dame's been in bed all day. How do you do, Mrs. Sedley? Why, Mr. Crane. Max Bernard to you. Silver Lane. Hey. Hey, that Mrs. Sedley? She said she was Mrs. Sedley. Shut up. You're becoming troublesome, Sophie. You didn't telephone Chadwick this morning? No, I didn't. Whom did you talk to? Does it matter now? Hey, what's that? <laughs> Look, cops, a million of them. So that was your telephone call. Wait a minute, Max. They got that covered, too. That dame crossed us up, didn't she? <laughs> she didn't do us no favors. We're not going to be able to get out of this. Now, you, you let me do the talking. Yeah, but what about this? We'll let her keep it for us. Huh? It'll give her something to explain. Nobody's gonna kid me. She crossed us up. Oh, stop him, Nody. Take it easy, you big one. Let me alone! Huh? Damn, come on, just let the ring. You all right, Mrs. Sedley? All right, you. Oh. Nosey Schwartz, the diamond friend. So what? You were in better company the last time I saw you, Max. Sorry we're so late, Mrs. Sedley. Miss Your own fault. Sedley, Mrs. Sedley. When will you learn, Inspector? I, I have done my best to solve this case for you, and I get no assistance from you. That isn't Mrs. Sedley. That's Sophie Lang. What? You're a liar. Here. Sophie Lang's dead, and you know it. Come on, now. She cut it out. Okay. Come What's on. the matter with okay, you? Right. Oh. Our impetuous young friend is almost as much deceived as you are, Inspector. I repeat, that is Sophie Lang, and she stole the Kruger diamond. And she and that hoodlum there came here to sell it to us. That's right. She's got the diamond in her bag right now. Well, how do you do? Sophie Lang, eh? Now, I've been wanting to meet up with you for a long time. How'd you like to take a little ride down to headquarters? You know, kind of even up for the nice buggy ride you've been giving me. That's a charming idea, Inspector. But first, I'd like to point out three little discrepancies in Mr. Bernard's story. Still figuring on talking your way out, eh? Oh, please. First, I did not try to sell the diamond to him. He tried to sell it to Mrs. Sedley. Huh? Second, 
I think you'd better take the diamond out of Mr. Bernard's pocket before he gets rid of it. Yeah, no, I, I, I what, what, what are you about? I, oh, it's absurd. Uh, she's right. What is this? He's got the diamond, but you're still Sophie Lang. That's the third discrepancy, Inspector. My name is Ethel Thomas. I told you I saw Sophie Lane's grave in England. Yeah, I know, I know, but... What about this, Max? Oh, I've nothing to say. I can't compete with these amateurs. You know, I think it's high time that I retired. Okay, come on. I shall devote the next few years to writing my memoirs. And you may be quite sure that I shan't forget to mention you, Mr. Thomas. You have plenty of time for that where you're going. Yeah. Sophie Lang is dead, isn't she, darling? Oh, good. So it's like that, isn't it? For well, once, Inspector, you're right. It is like that. Very much like that. Well, maybe you're right about Sophie Lang. I never figured you'd marry a dead one. 